of very, very reminiscent of the list that Azul was playing back in Portland. And Caleb's going to start things off. Going first, not really where you want to be with this Charizard EX deck, but has that battle VIP pass. I would write in all capitals, Rotom! <laughs> <laughs> where did you go, buddy? That is uh, certainly a card that you look for initially on the battle VIP pass search, and it's a little unfortunate to find out, but... This is always something I love to watch with the uh, the younger players who have recently aged up. This is something they've been practicing time and time again, that opening deck search, and he's just fanning through cards, <laughs> downloading so much information as he goes. Listen, the younger you are, the faster your brain processes things. Processes things. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're old. Double Charmander seems to be the grab here for Battle VIP Pass. Well, at least one of them. Maybe that Mew is going to join the bench here. Mew is such a powerful basic Pokemon in this Charizard EX deck, able to find those item cards you need, like Battle VIP Pass, Ultra Ball, and Rare Candy, just to name a few. We see that Artizone in the hand as well. That's going to be a nice option to find additional Pokemon. I believe we see a Pidgey in the opening hand too, so a lot of access. Maybe you can work in that Manaphy early on, identifying that Julio is a player that has those water energies, and that can be a, a dangerous surprise occasionally. Yeah, we still haven't seen something as impactful as the Moonlight Shuriken for a couple of prizes, but now with that Manaphy in play, you kind of just have to get rid of that idea in your mind and just go full Roaring Moon here. Well, I've been following Julio a little bit as a... Julio played against my brother in one of the earlier rounds when it was basically you need to win every single round from this point forward in order to play. Looks like Julio has been able to do that. So on an absolute run here in uh, the day two. And looks like this start is just going to be even hotter as you have the opening Ultra Ball double darkness discard. Squawk ability ready to roll. Again now Julio just searching the deck, seeing what he has available to him and what's prized. Having access to that Squawk Ability X is so important for a deck like this Roaring Moon. These are some great arts. Oh, yeah. Going with all the full art cards. There's the, the alternate art, Lumineon V. And this is a card that we haven't seen too much lately with its luminous sign, being able to search your deck for a supporter, put it in your hand. It was very popular during the Lugia era, even two copies in most of the decks. Now it's kind of seen as a liability a little bit. Yep, and obviously you have plenty of those liabilities as we've seen Squawk Billy, the Mew. At that point, who cares? Just yep. have all the liabilities. Uh, your opponent's still going to be likely taking those knockouts and left wow. and right. Double Roaring Moon ready to roll. And uh, we can get one additional card, too. This is quite the start here. Professor Sada's Vitality gets the full two energy. And draws three cards for it's Julio. A double cross switcher? What is going on here? This is a card we haven't really seen too much of lately yet again, but very good in oh this my, deck. Oh my, there's and an energy switch wow. too! This double is cross ridiculous! Switcher He's got the double cross switcher, and then he gets to throw away the hand with Squawkabilly. <laughs> uh, can you write it up any better than this for Roaring Moon? Uh, not my script. <laughs> Six brand new cards. There's even the canceling cologne in the list to actually pull off some shenanigans with Moonlight Shuriken. Wow, what an opening start. Can only imagine what the Pokestop looks like. Sure, throw yeah, away a dark that. energy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Galarian Moltres V to go along with it. Dire Flame Wings grab an energy. Four energy in play on turn one for Julio here. Unbelievable and opening start to remove the Pidgey from play. Caleb tried to play it safe and play the man if he think about some other resources. You don't think about double cross switcher taking out your Pidgey there on that opening turn. Yeah, and you're fine taking that knockout on the Pidgey. Roaring Moon has 230 HP, so just out of range of Burning Darkness with Charizard EX. Caleb does have that rare candy. Charizard EX will be able to charge up itself as well as that Mute so you can retreat. And I think there's a boss's orders in hand, so Caleb might just bring up that Mew EX, take the knockout, and try to prize race. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think I know which side of the field I'd rather be on with the prize <laughs> race, though. Uh, it's the shiny side. Yeah, <laughs> There's a lot going on here, and this hand is still absolutely juiced. 
Well, Mysterious Tail's going to hope to find a couple hold, more hold up. cards here. Rare Candy. Those are pretty good. Ultra Ball. There's Luminion in hand as well for Caleb. But I think if you play that, it's probably worst case scenario. It just opens up an easy knockout with boss's orders where you don't have to frenzy gouging. You have to think that Caleb will run out of gas at some point. So you take the Ultra Ball. Maybe that's an option that opens up some other avenues soon enough, but discarding cards doesn't seem great when your hand's so low. Yeah, especially when you don't have access to that Pidgeot EX with its quick search. Your deck is very limited on the options that you have available to you. Caleb was thinking there maybe about going back in, but I think we're just going to hold on to that Ultra Ball for the following turn. There's the retreat. Boss's orders that Mew... It was going to be able to respond with a knockout here, but wow. it is looking scary. Yeah, think about the game that we just witnessed and, <laughs> and how slow the prize cards fell off the board. We are rushing to a finish very early on, and we are not even seven minutes into the game at this point. Cards flying left and right in the earthen vessel. Once more, looking for some additional energies. Just one left in the deck here, it seems like. Energy switch in hand, Ultra Ball. There's another Sada's ready to go, too. Oh, wow. Well, there is the Ultra Ball, discards the water energy, and that second copy of Energy Switch. And that puts the second energy in the discard for this Professor Sada's vitality. And finally, Radiant Greninja is found. Yeah, this is Julio thinking about some longevity in this situation. You just lost restart, which is typically a way to continue to refresh that hand up. In this situation, uh, you have energy right now as a, a way to maybe add some additional cards into the hand, so why not work that in, along with the Sada's Vitality, which will draw some additional cards here, too. Also important to note, the Charmander on Caleb's bench is not the attacking one here. Usually, you find these Charizard EX players taking a knockout on a Roaring Moon EX that used Frenzied Gouging the following turn with just a simple attack of 30. But right now, it doesn't have that available to him. Clear energy on the Greninja, yeah. the water energy on the active. A little surprising to see the energy to the Radiant Greninja as opposed to the Roaring Moon on the bench. It could just be a dark energy away from knockout on a return charge or DX, which seems to be the worst case scenario uh, from, from the other side. Caleb promotes the Charmander here. Has Ultra Ball Rare Candy. Can go ahead and get another Charizard available. He's thinking about this Luminion V. We'll go ahead and use it. Use that Luminous Sign. Maybe we're going to see an Iono here. That's, uh, that's certainly where I'd lean at this point, and you just have to assume that your opponent has an opportunity to accelerate onto that Roaring Moon. Not seeing the energy on that Pokemon is a little bit of an avenue to potentially uh, see some light and maybe stick the, uh, the Charizard in the active for more than one turn. But this is looking like a, a tough debate. Arvin seems to be the supporter of choice, no? I mean, Arvin leads into Charmander, which leads into another opportunity to maybe have a third Charizard. But you can also just use the Radiant Charizard that you have in your hand there. I feel like you get, get a lot of resources there, but oh, the it looks like the Super Rod is really important in this spot. As we see, only two Fire Energies in the deck, which yeah. would mean there's no additional energy for the Radiant to close out. This is the problem of only playing six Fire Energy in the list. You're very tight on the resources you have available, and especially if you prize any. That's really just the big detriment. Yeah, it's a, it's a big danger. We see the three energies there with the one in the prize cards. It's going to lead to having to play these cards a slightly out of order, but it ends up being okay. There is the forest seal stone still, which could lead to finding Iono or boss's orders, whatever it may be, to help potentially find two remaining prize cards. And uh, this is still fairly dangerous. Well, there is that super odd. A couple energies, three energies total. Rare Candy, Charizard EX, Infernal Rain, charge up yet again. But 
Are you going to have to retreat here or just charge up that Radiant Charizard? Three prizes for Julio. You still have a little bit of wiggle room. Yeah, this is a great spot. Imagine telling Caleb, hey, you're going to lose your Pidgey on the opening turn. And sure enough, here you are. You've managed to make two Charizard EX and a Radiant Charizard uh, all under the most pressure we've seen a player <laughs> under the entirety of the tournament. Now all it's going to take is energy, energy switch. Boss's orders, cross switcher. Julio definitely has the resources available to pull off at least a knockout this turn. Finds Iono off the top. But now he's running the risk of actually just losing the following turn to this Charizard EX. Yeah, the situation now calls for finding a way to remove the Force Seal Stone. Uh, Cross Switcher, bring up what, Manaphy and knock it out with Radiant Greninja. Get to the 2-2 prize cards and then try to close out the following turn. Hopefully your opponent doesn't have the boss's orders. Earth and Vessel going to take a look through the deck, but there's no energy left for Julio here. He's one in hand, and this is the awkward part about playing Cross Switchers with a card like Iono. One in hand, Iono trying to dig for more. Uh, you're going to put that second one on the bottom and never see it again. Yeah, playing to outs that are very difficult to find at this point. don't believe there's even a way to remove that Forest Seal Stone on the other side from Caleb. Yeah, not playing card like Lost Vacuum. Canceling clone, Iono. Leo's going to find three. Caleb's going to find two. Oh. Double battle VIP pass, Earthen Vessel. That's not going to do anything here. And there's not even an attack for Julio. And yep, who's ready for another game? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, such a crazy start from Julio there. But this is the power of Charizard EX and Caleb Robinson taking game one here in pretty exciting fashion. <laughs> yeah, that was certainly fireworks from the very get go. Both these players. Uh, showing us exactly why these decks are in contention to make the top eight here. I, I, I can't help but wonder. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't seem like Caleb was going to find a way, but the, both players really focused on that Luminion V, which is a card we don't get to talk about so often. It led to an early turn one knockout here for Julio, knocking out that Pidgey with the ridiculous double cross switcher, which this turns into a Charizard knockout just to stay in the prize race seems so bad from here such a low hand size but Caleb was able to continue to mount some resources uh, after this knockout you just you just hope that enough is there and sure enough the hand has ultra ball rare candy Luminion with a four seal stone and you get to lock in that final energy on the radiant Charizard to equate to a, a checkmate and Leo just finds the worst possible handoff Iono has to give up for the game yeah, this is just unfortunately how things went for our Roaring Moon player here, but hoping for better, which honestly can't get much better with yeah. those early first few I turns. Mean, I yeah. hope Caleb doesn't draw into those boss's orders. Uh, turn turn one does not get any better. I guess turn two and three, but oh, yeah, we'll wow. see. Double Arvin. Double Arvin, double fire energy, and a 101 Pidgeot line. Caleb could be strapped for resources here in this game, too. Double, Double Dark, dark Patch. patch. Well, he can work with that. Alone. I think Caleb's going to be a lot more sad. <laughs> oh, I'd be sad, Definitely too. Definitely a lot more sad. Yep. <laughs> That's not great. Julio starts with the Roaring Moon in the active spot. Galarian Moltres V with the Forest Sealstone on the bench. So already going to have a pretty good turn one to pair along with that Battle VIP pass. Eyeing down Radiant Greninja. And potentially something like that Squawk Ability EX to get that Squawk and Seize going. Yep, potential for Fireworks once more. That Forest Seal Stone on the Moltres. But going first, it's just, it doesn't always lead to that. We see the Sadas in hand. Looks like that will be discarded along the way. It only takes a, an Earthen Vessel typically to, to start to start see uh, these cards. Uh, turn into a lot of energies on the board. Usually it, usually it takes a village. Yeah. Instead, you just need a vessel. Looks 
looks like uh, they're having some discussion with the judge here. Okay. I think it might be a warning for what oh, yeah. looks like insufficient shuffling. Maybe. Uh, I didn't get to take a look, but we've also seen occasionally players will shuffle, then relook at the deck, and then shuffle again. Didn't know if that was a case of that or. I mean, we've seen we've seen all sorts of things, but thankfully this is not anywhere close to prize penalties yeah. <laughs> situations. Now, if those warnings keep stacking up, that's when it gets a little bit worrisome. Oh, concealed cards finds Professor Sada and a dark energy, but now with two in hand, is it worth it to squawk and seize here? Yep, this is a list with the pow pad. Has the cross butcher in hand as well? Yeah, I mean. Huge resources to lose there. Turns off one of your cross switchers completely at this point. Opportunities to draw into Asadas for the following turn diminish drastically, but you want to take that risk at this point. You the opportunity to draw six additional cards, you take it. And the six cards Julio drew are pretty beneficial. A couple energies. Ultra Ball found that earthen vessel from the trekking shoes and has Mew EX in hand, so you can. Basically, thin out the hand as much as possible if you want. And maybe restart here, but we'll have to see what he decides to do here. Already two energy on the active Roaring Moon. It's going to threaten an attack for a knockout next turn. Yep, and uh, you have to think how difficult it will be for Caleb to move this Pokemon in the active spot. Two fire energies already in the prize card, so that means you have four energies total to work with. You'll likely have to have the energy in hand, as we saw that retreating was not an option in the opening game. And speaking of options, Caleb has the Arvin to start things off. Going second, has two in the prize cards, but just naturally has it. You know, it's, uh, it's like Luminion did its job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's absolutely not pulling its weight this time around. <laughs> yeah, Luminion having that powerful ability in Luminous Sign only available when you play it from your hand to your bench. So it's one of the worst starters you can have in this deck. And one thing I do love to see players do is just take notes. Uh, any, anytime you can ease your brain a little bit uh, for the future, you, you always want to save that brain power. Yep, gives you an opportunity to uh, use some of that extra time that clearly both these players will have in a matchup like this. Price cards fly left and right. You've got opportunities. You just want to make sure that you know exactly what those prize cards are so that when you are drawing into them, you can play two outs like that where Caleb is drawing two additional prize cards and doesn't have the answers to maybe have a rare candy Charizard, Radiant Zard, everything ready to go. He knows that those prize cards are there waiting for him. Maybe you draw into an Arvin, which you can count on later. I think we're going to see a pretty full bench from Caleb here. Eyeing down Charmander, Rotom has that four seal stone in hand to fetch another battle VIP pass to grab Manaphy, Pidgey. Now eyeing down that Mew. And it does look like Manaphy and Mew is going to be the cards of choice for Caleb here. Four seal stone, star alchemy. Again, such a powerful tool card in the format, being able to search your deck for any card. Turns any of your Pokemon V into ooh, a half Arceus. Ooh. Okay, hey, I, was, I was worried now if there was a decision that had to be made, but Artisan is thankfully a, uh, a bailout button to at least get the Pidgey into play. You see one cross switcher already down, so it's less likely that this Pokemon will be targeted once more because that leads to so many easier decisions when you can pull any card out of your deck. And one big thing, too, if Julio does take the knockout on this active Luminion V, that's going to turn on Burning Darkness to take one-hit knockouts on any Pokemon Julio promotes. Yep, it's uh, you're, you're asking for a, a war at that point. If you take that knockout, you have to be prepared to have follow-up. You need additional energies on board. Every energy switch needs to be lining up to either uh, an energy onto a Radiant Greninja or to a Roaring Moon at that point. And we'll see if the answers are there. Luminion can help out to find Asada's one of the two remaining in the deck at this point. I thought I already saw the Professor Sada's Vitality in hand for Julio, but it must have been something else like that boss's orders. Maybe Iono. But finding this powerful supporter for the ancient trait Pokemon 
going to be able to charge up this Roaring Moon EX in the active, as well as that one on the bench. Then you can save your energy attachment for the one on the bench. It does look like it was the boss's orders in hand. Not only does Professor Sada's excel energy to your ancient Pokemon, you get to draw three cards, too. Sign me up. It works out so well here. Julio trying to build up a hand at this point. Find some resources to maybe have a game plan after this knockout. This Ultra Ball is going to allow Tire Flame Wings from Galarian Moltres to go ahead and grab a Dark Energy. One thing that Julio has been missing is something like those Earthen Vessels there to chain together. And Palpad putting back the Sadas. Yep, thankful to find that card. This is the exact turn where you'd like to find it. You already were able to draw some additional resources. Now you shuffle back in the Sadas. Have an opportunity to accelerate some additional energies later on. Do you think he's ready, Jeremy? Sure, you can take the knockout, but are you comfortable with this current hand in the board state? No. <laughs> well, we'll see how Julio feels, because it's time. Knockout. <laughs> Calamity Storm taking the knockout, discarding the Arter Zone from Caleb. And having that Mew on the bench is just such a great promotion. Already has Ultra Ball Rare Candy in hand. We're going to see the Ultra Ball thin the deck out of a card here. But again, it also depends what you hit with the Mew. If you go for the Pidgeot or if you just go for the Charizard. I was like, you know what would be good here? Maybe Luminion. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. That guy. Oh, that's in the discard, Kyle. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how that works, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> does look like hmm, it was about to be Charizard, but Pidgeot EX pulled to the front. And this is going to be a little bit risky. Does have access to Iono to be able to draw some more cards, but is going to rely on this Mysterious Tail to find either Ultra Ball or a Rare Candy just so you can fetch the other one with Quick Search. Exactly. And the sequencing is great here. You can Rare Candy into this Pokemon. You may ask, why would you do that first? It's because you wanted to play the Ultra Ball. And um, make sure that you pull that uh, Pidgeot out of the deck first before you line up those resources. Looks like all of these that resources stink. Except for that Charizard EX. That's what you need. Oh, we found Charizard. Cool. Yeah, I'm was, looking at the rest of it. It was I sandwiched the in between the Battle VIP okay. passes. That helps. <laughs> now, now it had, it, if you can find the rare candy, that'd be ideal. And sure I'm enough, two there's two. This means Caleb still has access to Quick Search. Let's be able to search the deck for any card. Mm -hmm. We also see the fire energy to retreat. All right. And remember, this is the game where Caleb prized two fire energies. Going to be searching for the rest of them in the deck. Yep. And at this point, potentially you find an additional resource to find the next Charizard. You can start to build that along in your hand. As you know, that it's pretty unlikely that Julio is going to Incorporate Hand Disruption. Looks like a focus on the Radiant Charizard here. Maybe you want to get the energy uh, played onto this Pokemon after you accelerate and Rare Candy into this Charizard. Caleb choosing the right Charmander Rare Candy into, leaving that one. Ooh, <laughs> wants to attack with Ooh. the Radiant Zard to start things off. Okay. I mean, with the way things are, there is two... Uh, Pokemon EX in play for Caleb, so just two frenzied gougings in a row to be able to seal this game up for Julio. So, pretty heads up play, trying to disrupt the prize map. Yeah, it looks it looks like the the answers won't be there for Julio to find a boss's orders knockout on a an EX Pokemon this time around, especially with the, just the the lack of energies currently. This hand is not great. Second Pokestop found off the top. Has that Dire Flame Wings 2 energy on the Galarian Moltres V now. Cross Switcher in hand. Switch Cart. This is going to have to be a pretty good Pokestop. Finding maybe Dark Patch, Cross Switcher, Dark Patch. It needs like six lures on it. This has to be <laughs> the greatest Pokestop we've ever seen. 
How about a battle VIP pass? Dark Ooh. Energy Sada. How's that rank on your Pokestops? <laughs> Near the bottom? Low. Mm. Low. <laughs> two, two out of ten. Does have access to that four seal stone, though, so we'll be able to search for a Sada, it seems like. Still have that cross switcher available to you. Just thinking through the plays and the resources. Energy acceleration's beneficial. Another thing that's missing is a second Roaring Moon, too. Yeah, to cross switchers yeah. are at the top of Julio's mind here. And now needs another energy to even attack. Uh, Ultra Ball, Sada, cross, cross switcher. switcher. There's, there's no energy. No Is there energy. energy switch? Anything to... I, I think Julio's going to be forced to... Ultra Ball this hand down for Mew and try to restart into an energy to attack with or something like a Dark Patch, maybe? That's the lines I'm seeing. Has the switch cart. Can go ahead and bring up Galarian Moltres V. Discard's battle VIP pass. It has to be has to be the Pokestop here. No. This card's the switch card. Unless I'm missing something. I'm following the lines right there with you. And Just keeping the Pokestop in hand. That's one yeah. less card that makes, you're going to be able to draw off restart. Makes this a little more difficult. Especially because you're already switching... With the cross switcher, switch cart bringing that roaring moon to the bench opens up a lot more plays. And even in the perfect situation, you're able to knock out the uh, the Charizard on the bench with the uh, the cross switchers. What's your follow up to another radiant Charizard just knockout? And it doesn't seem great, but the hand is starting to. Oh, there is an energy lower. switch. Just, okay. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I was. Confused for a second, but all the gold just runs together. Pokestop now, and the, the additional card found off of the Mew. Yes, you take the damage. That's completely fine in this spot. You've taken the prize cards to at least stay in the game. The problem now is you're likely attacking active Pokemon from this point on. We've seen three cross switchers gone. Boss's orders would have to be in the mix, and we don't see any energy except for the one on the Glarian Moltres now. It's looking like even though Caleb is down in prize cards, the route to victory is easy. Lost Vacuum gets rid of the Pokestop here, has the knockout with that Radiant Charizard. Is that Iono in, the in active hand? Spot. Yeah, Iono in hand, going to put Julio down to two cards here, and this is not where you want to be when you're a Roaring Moon. Choice belt, professor's research found among Jirachi and Switch. Nothing too bad here. I guess losing the Pidgeot means Caleb is going to be down in energies, but I think found one off the prize cards. And that was the big question at that point. If you can find that fifth energy attached to that Charizard EX on the bench. If anything were to happen to the Radiant Charizard, of course, this Pokemon can't attack next turn if it's stuck in the active spot. So it looks like there is still an additional turn remaining for Julio. It would be great if Julio has an energy for turn and Iono. Try to force Caleb to have it and just attack with that Glarian Moltres. The Iono. The Iono. Oh, oh, there's double, double energy cross switcher. Or there's energy double, switch. Double energy switch, but it's to Luminion at this point. Looking for the water energy. Oh, that would be pretty cool. You could use Aqua Return, take the knockout, <laughs> run away, promote a single. Earthen Vessel. Oh, this is actually lining up. Is Iono in hand for Julio? I haven't seen it yet. I want to see the water juice first. Okay, now I can get excited. There's some plays here. Aqua Return. Free retreat on the Mew. Promotion of the Radiant Greninja. If there was hand disruption to go with this, he gets a high five. <laughs> I no know. way! 
the one of supporter in Julio's deck, and he has it at the perfect time to try and tie up this match here in the winning in for top eight. Jeremy, don't ask me how he closes out the game, but that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You love to see cool plays like this. Aqua Return brings up Radiant Greninja. Caleb needs an energy just to attack and energy and boss's orders to take the game this turn. Three fire energies to the discard pile. Not satisfied with the hand. It's the Mew promotion to potentially find a beneficial item card. Really debating about it, too. Three cards in hand now. Boss's orders, rare candy, and I think... Uh, Blank card, basically. That Pokestop is in the lost zone. There's not an opportunity for Caleb to find additional resources. Super Rod Super here is big. Super Rod. I mean, you think about Super Rod finding Luminion. If there was an Ultra Ball, you could then find some additional resources. Yeah, if only you can grab the Ultra Ball and Super Rod. And like three other cards so that you don't <laughs> have to discard your hand away with the Ultra Ball. There's just one Fire Energy left in Caleb's deck. I think you have to grab this, but because you can grab the Ultra Ball, evolve into a Charizard, but you only search for one energy. Yep. You're missing the switch. <laughs> Caleb's like, can, can, I, can I go to seven energies <laughs> real quick? <laughs> Would have made life so much easier. Oh, and it was rough because if he had access to that seventh energy, that Ultra Ball paired with that boss's orders is game. Again, not only is it just top eight on the line, the chance to win the tournament, the difference in prize money between top eight, top 16, crazy. I mean, the top 16, not guaranteed at this yeah. point either for these players. It likely could be a top 32, huge swing. And that's just a pass of the turn. Caleb holding onto the Super Rod in considerations to find more items with the Mew. Okay, we see a Dark Patch Energy. You have Dire Flame Wings. That's three energy on the Moltres. Can you get this Radiant Greninja out of the active spot? Pokey stop, Sada. Sada's, can't Sada. There's, there's no, no ancient Pokemon. I, I think you you could play Poke mm. Stop, but then your opponent gets to use it and maybe find a game-winning oh. resource. Concealed cards, the energy away. Two cards here for Julio. Earthen Vessel, Poke Stop. <laughs> but everything's telling you to use that Poke Stop, but I understand <laughs> why you don't want to. Earthen Vessel is going to be able to search for some energies that are left. It looks like, yeah, dark energy and a water. Julio still has the attachment for turn available, still has a supporter available, but I don't know if there's a supporter in the deck that can actually keep digging. I don't know if there's ancient Pokemon left in the deck. Yep. Uh, this has to be a Pokestop angle. You have to consider maybe the Pokestop into card like the Switch cart here. Big three, no! And that's not only is it difficult to see because you don't find the cards, but maybe you opened up the avenue for Caleb to find some game-winning cards. I, I, I think you just have to go for it, right? Dark Patch attached to the Glaring Moltres and restart for one. There's been, what, one Switch card played this game Are you so using far? your one time, Jeremy? One time. Oh. Julio doesn't want to use it, though. Just pass, pass the, the turn. turn. Dangerous Bosses fire energy hand. found. Is there? I think if Ultra Ball is found off this Mysterious Tail, Caleb can win the game right here. Going to poke stop first. Ultra Ball. Two Ultra Balls. But discards the Charizard. Has the Super Rod, though, so you can Super Rod, couple energies, and that Charizard EX back. And I think with that, Caleb should have this. The resources are all lined up at this spot. Even without the boss's orders, you could bring back the Luminion, but it's in hand, ready to go. No need to shuffle. We're going back in. At this point, Caleb just wants to make sure he lines up all of it, but it seems to be there. He sees the line. Charizard EX, Infernal Rain, raining down those fire energies. One on the active, one on that bench. Charizard retreat. And sealing things up with a boss's orders just like that. Caleb Rogerson going into top eight here in Charlotte. Representing North Carolina. Making the home team proud. Moving into the top eight here.